And speaking of fatherhood, next is a man who has listeners and some of the staff laughing through tears. Maurice Chavez with Pressing Issues. Okay, hello and welcome to the show. This is Pressing Issues with me, Maurice Chavez. At one time, my show was buried in overnights, but now I am a man on the way up. Today, helping me to press the issue and separate the sweet juice of truth from the pulpy discharge of lies and misunderstanding, we have technologist Martin Graves. Uh, first, Martin, please explain to every person listening at home what on earth a technologist is. Uh, hello, Maurice. I- I'm all about the future and about how technology has the power. Uh, uh, yeah, that yeah, that's to- very interesting, Martin, but let me finish my introductions first, okay? This is this is my show, a public service to Vice City. Just ask Like me. the man who takes your dead poodle and mounts it on a commemorative plaque at Pet Stuffers. But how can we worry about our elderly family members or dog soiling themselves when there are nuclear missiles aimed at Vice City? It is well known. Vice City is a prime target, as the Russians hate our speedboat culture and enormous melons. But enough of orange analogies for the moment. Uh, okay, so a technologist is... I'm sorry, so, there are other people on the panel. I, I, I said, I, I said, I should is... press the issue, my friend, not stroke your ego, okay? I like that. Uh, please, where do they get these people, eh? Okay, bueno. Next up, we have America's favorite female industrialist, Forbes Waverly III. Hello, Forbes. Hey, Chavez, can we get on with this? There's a real estate closing I have to get to. Has someone got a light? Certainly. And my, those are very empowering cigarettes. Interesting name, by the way. Kind of manly. Not exactly gender-specific, but hey, what do I know? Nothing, clearly. Moving on. Finally, on our little panel of experts, here to press the issue, we have a woman who is a local activist, attending every city council meeting to mouth off. Intense public activist, Bryony Craddock. Hello. Nice to meet you, Bryony. You know, I can't help but notice you're wearing a half shirt and have a large belly. Are you by any chance pregnant? Uh, yes, obviously. Look at me. What do you think? That I was just a fat bitch? Typical patriarch. Hey, hey, okay, okay. Hold your temper there. You know, to my people, fertility is very important. The Aztecs all went sterile from UFOs. I read it in a book. Who is this guy? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Grace, for chiming in there. And goldfish live in trees. Welcome. Okay, as I was saying, a pregnant woman is very beautiful. Is it your first? Uh, no, dumbass. It's my 16th. 16? Yeah. Good Lord. And as my people say, the Grand Canyon is a very big place. And if you're going, please, take a flashlight. Are, are you not worried about overpopulating? Well, someone's got to make sure we aren't overrun. Plus, I'm producing nothing but top quality offspring, Mo. Oh, please. Hey, hey, hey excuse me. It's Maurice, please. Okay? Not Mo. I'm not a farmer. I'm trying to build a career here, eh? A reputation. A pathway that will take me all the way to the Pulitzer. You know, if public radio cannot influence policymakers, I don't know what can. Bribes. Blackmail. Yes, 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 yes. Debate, 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 please. Wow. Healthy debate. A young idea. Getting pulled into maturity by people who know. Go-getters on the path to being broadcasting superstars. One day, I will be a news anchor on a major station. Let's press the issue. What issue? I was getting to that. Okay, listen, all of you. You know, this show only works if you let me speak. I'm the ringmaster, okay? You're the lions. You clap like seals when I say something. And then a clown comes and scoops up my poop. And the children clap. And this, this, my friends, is show business. Ugh. So, let me do my bit. Okay, lady? You are so rude. I'm a mother. I take priority. Please, miss, let us press the issue first and fall out later, okay? Now, in today's hectic society, in this age of mini portable filing systems you carry everywhere so you know the date and the phone number, of high-tech wristwatches with digital readout, in this crazy time of condominium development and junk that has been turned into buns, anything is possible. American workers are drunk. Factories are shutting down. Use wearing leather moccasins and piercing their ears. And even the family itself is under threat. Dear God, no. Yes. And, as that drag queen in charge in Britain said, (laughs) there is no such thing as society. So let's press the issue. Modern life in 1984. Crazy or what? Is that it? Modern life? Crazy or what? That's an issue? Oh, you are so pathetic. Pathetic, Mr. Hola Man. I was told we were here to discuss labor issues, to discuss deregulating the corporate shackles that are strangling this town. What kind of pathetic loser journalist are you? Yeah, take another drag of your ciggy, Waverly. You know, you make me shiver the way you look at me, like I shiver in the bathroom, looking down at the urinal. And I say, man, that's a lot of men's hair. Then I say, Maurice, you are packed full of testosterone. You are massive! Ew! Is it just me, or is it just this angle? What was she talking about? My little boy got the job done. 
But you know what? I'm drifting. The fact remains, they are the same thing. For the working man, too much work. For the fat cat, or in your case, very thin and sexless, nicotine-stained cat. Too many regulations. The working man wants spare time and spare money to indulge his hobbies, like street clubs and alcoholism, while the fat cat wants increased profits to pay for divorces and having uncooperative spouses killed. How do we use modern technology such as the enormous shoulder pad or the espadrille to make life better, eh? Not worse. Martin Graves, you work in the field of technology. What do you think? I th I'm glad that finally, because I've been here. I think the, the single most incredible thing in the whole universe is the human spleen. Uh, apart from the giraffe's neck. Please, somebody uh, we, shut we, him we, up! Uh, miss... Don't be angry. We have the power to save ourselves, and technology is the solution. In less than, than five years, manual labor will be entirely obsolete. I have no idea what you're saying. Go on. Um, in El Bente, I can't, uh, I'll, I'll get a dictionary. Uh, shops will be staffed by, by robots. Robots. Uh, coal will be mined by robots. Uh, dogs will be worked by robo robotic cats. Even, even the dogs themselves will be robotic. I mean, if you think you want a baby, but, but don't know for certain, you'll have a robot baby you can build and raise instead. It will drink oil instead of milk. You're a robot. Yes. That it's, is it's right the economy. I wish I was a robot. God, that's atrocious. That is inhumane, sir. You're very narrow because you're from low income. Excuse me? Nonsense. Because it's already happening in Japan, Australia. Did you know uh, one of two babies born in last year in Sweden was a robot? And the rest already act like them. They they have the happiest society on the planet. But, they, but they how are, are they making these robots? What are you talking about? I'm I, I, I feel like I'm alone in this room. Do robots ever top themselves? Do they Are they ever on top? They're usually bottom. Do robot women ever spend all your money on shoes and complain about how you empty the bank out of $5 to own the future? An electronic future? They don't have the conception. Do robots invent idiotic religions? No, but, but that's but not But nothing, you silly little tiny person. Excuse me? Excused. What's the difference between an electronic friend I make in my bedroom and the unnecessary fetus you're carrying right now. All right. We both it, made them. Who are you to say your method is better than mine? Who made you God, you, you... You are revolting to use God's name that way. How dare you speak to a pregnant woman like that? Oh, shut up, sweetheart. What? Stop it with that pregnancy stuff. So you've knocked out a few puppies. Good for you. Oh. You expect this little jerk with his midget dick to be nice to you? Oh. I don't understand why this is even an issue. This country was founded on the fact that we should take land from whomever. In this case, alligators and swamp people. What the hell? Florida is about development. What? And I didn't move down here from my beautiful Connecticut to have some hippies stand in the way of progress. My father ignored me throughout my childhood so that I could have loads of money and buy designer shoes and be mean to the help. I don't have time to bang the help much less be down and out for nine months. Pregnancy ruins a body. Please, you can just tell by looking at that enormous elephant sitting across from me. Somebody get me some ice cream. What do you know? What would you know about any of this? You are barren. And I'm helping the economy. It is a vast wasteland in that uterine excuse for a body you have. I'm really not happy about the anti-family tone of this panel, especially people who put mothers down. Mothers founded this country and covered wagons with full uteruses. If you didn't have a mother, you would be asexual. And then what would you do on Friday nights when you get lonely? Get a hooker like my husband? Split into two? Mitosis? I mean, you can't raise a kid in this climate. Thank God. These commercials these days, like little lacy surprise. It's disgusting. It's immoral. I like that. I like that ad. Certainly, it is a little vulgar. Imagine charging that much for children's underwear. It's impossible to keep my kids from mimicking what they see on TV. All mine wants to do is yell and scream and shout and kill foreigners. What the hell is he watching? He's been watching the State of the Union address. Good kid. And thank God we campaigned successfully to get Crow off the radio in this town. That album was indecent, and I don't like it. And nobody should be able to buy it ever, yes, ever. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what? I quite like this album. It's so moving. Sounds like El Futuro Blanca. Shiva's got a shiv. And wet children in the rain. Oh. The one that got him in the most trouble, eh? But what is art? Eh, someone explain that to me. Is it tossing cans of paint and chickens into a jet engine? Or is it leaving your friends behind so you can make a lot of money? Like when Crow left Ambulance so he could sing the tune Red Scare. 
A song about a young woman in the middle of the Soviet bureaucracy that is late for her period. We certainly are pressing the issue. You know what, mister? That kind of trash doesn't need to be on the radio. Especially songs about doing yoga and, and how to make love for three days without coming. Ooh. I don't know what Aztec jazz or Carl Jung is, but my kids shouldn't be exposed to it. Well, all of this spawning leads to one thing. Unworkable economic systems. What? TV shows with three boys and three girls sharing a bathroom. It's obscene. In my house, where rich people live, we have six bathrooms per person, and only the men shower together. Oh, it's how we were raised. You know what happens when you have collective ownership, a man will come use your tractor and your wife. And I'm not just talking about baking biscuits, Dear sweetheart. God. I'm talking about making sure that butt in your oven is yours. What? About owning the oven. About owning the whole bakery. Listen, I know it's mine. I haven't even left the hospital bed from delivering a baby, and my husband is already on top of me, wanting a new one. Oh, he's a red-blooded American man with a full working penis. He says he's only attracted to me when I've got that, that motherly glow. Yeah, I think you're all getting a little too personal. Excuse it's, me? I, well, I'm just giving my opinion. I think it's you're getting a little too personal for this. Gestation's a lie. Huh. Science. It's I, You should hear what they're teaching young minds in science class in college. Homo superior? Yeah, right. It's, Listen, education should be privatized, and I don't care whose land we took. This is today, and it's simply not fair that I can't run bingo and sell tax-free cigarettes in clear slums, all because of some hideous, puritanical streak in people. Religion has everything to answer for this. Technology's my religion. For me, an electronic calculator is like the Bible. People used to try to understand the universe through things like parables and abstract ideas. Now we understand it completely with numbers. I can type things in and turn the calculator upside down and spell words. Now this is something I'd like to see. Sure, and I know for a fact that life is completely pointless and meaningless. Uh, if I have an imaginary friend, uh, I'd be put in a home. But if you let a man wear a dress and write a book about it, they call you a saint. Life is random. R religion is for the weak. I could be killed tomorrow. Thank this God. woman right here could sit on me with her with her uh, stomach and kill me. I have a painful hemorrhoid. Whenever I think about killing people, or, or when I write a computer program and hit delete, I know it is the end for those lines of code. And quite frankly, that makes me feel good. You're a sad and lonely man. You have some very strange ideas. You should probably go into politics. Bryony, can technology really save the day? Is religion pointless? It's patriarchy, this kind of talk. Calculators are a way of keeping women down, just like slide rules were in the 60s, of ruining families. Have you got a family, Maurice? In my opinion, we are all one family, really, especially in Utah. And you have a lot in the car. Sometimes you they did, stick ten of them. You know what, mister? If you did, you'd understand. This city has lost its soul. It used to stand for something. Now it's just about real estate speculation and cocaine dealing and tax avoidance and gunfights. All vital parts of the economy. What? What exactly did this place ever stand for? For freedom, my friend. For freedom. In a much controlled way in which everyone is alike and looks alike and is just like me and can stand on their front lawn with a 12-gauge shotgun. That is democracy. Stop talking! And so it would seem. Anyway, let's take a quick break to discuss this station's funding problems with Jonathan Freeloader. Over to you, Jonathan. It's me. Oh, hey, Michelle. Hello, so you haven't got a family, you little turd? No, what are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you I'm pregnant, you asshole? Michelle, please. Either marry me or pay for me to have it sorted out, but don't ignore me. I'm not some cheap slut you can treat like uh, this. But we are on radio, my dear. This is hardly the time to... Hardly the time? What do you know about the time? Michelle? When I found you, you were a failing clown working the birthday party circuit for juvenile delinquents in corrections institutions, getting your clown hair set on fire. I have been in this business since you were making dogs out of balloons. I made you, Maurice Chavez, and you treat me like a lady of the evening? We're both consenting adults. You said no commitment. I'm going to get you, Chavez, you little shit, if it's the last thing I do. Please, Michelle. Well, uh, okay, there, you see? Healthy debate. Give generously. It's a great cause. I make a meager salary and... You revolt me. Oh, stick it. You self-righteous bitch. Maurice Chavez is done with you. 
I am going to have an agent, and maybe someday a car with T-tops. This is a perfect example of why the government shouldn't be funding the media. It gives people ideas above their station. This histrionic sow should be working in the fields, not giving people ideas they don't need. Such as? Such as holidays and sick pay. If something is good for the economy, it's good for the country. Period. Otherwise, you must be Russian. Americans need more patriots. Patriots carry guns and shoot British people on sight. The British are obsolete, like Fortran. I mean, the metric system. Don't make me puke Britain. <laughs> they measure They measure things with rocks over there. Okay, I okay, just okay, okay, a little people. in my pants. Hey, hold on, what? 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 Okay, I'm being told we're running out of time. Seems so quick. Yes, you know, I would like to keep going with this panel, but as they say, if the elevator cable snaps, if your life support machine fails, and there's a nuclear missile hurling towards your hometown, find the woman to hold. Even if she is a frigid mess who only cares about draining the wetlands. I want to talk about the beauty of motherhood. Not again! Many men found pregnant women attractive. Yes, yes, but in the same way a car crash is sexy. But really, afterwards... All you are left with is a broken wreck and a puddle of antifreeze. And the muffler is like a placenta, I think. I don't know. But what I do know is I am Maurice Chavez. This has been Pressing Issues. And I think we have shown that liberal debate is well and healthy and living alive and in America. Martin Graves. Thank you. My closing statement? Uh, no. Technologist and future serial killer. Forbes Waverly. Hateful capitalist with absolutely no human soul and That's completely me. sexless. Bryony? Uh, Bri Bryony? Are, are, are you okay? Do I look okay, you dumb shit? I'm going into labor. Quick. Somebody do something. Ay, Dios mío. What? I, uh, have, I have a robotic thing for this. Oh, that's broke. beautiful. I need a cigarette. It's pressing it's issues first like breaking. American right water that J just, broke. Oh my god. Something's wet on me. Uh, what's just relax. I need a cigarette. Let it I out. can't handle this. Okay. Her Wait, hemorrhoid uh, just popped. Does anybody have do you have here. any uh, head is crowning. Ew, that's head disgusting. Wait, so someone get some towels. And really that's all we have time for. Breathe. She's making a mess of my studio. Get her out. Ay Dios mío, this is some stressed out mess. I don't I don't even think I can go near one of those things again. It's disgusting. That was Pressing Issues here on VCPR, hosted by the intelligent and topical Maurice Chavez, whom I've been calling for a week and doesn't seem to ever answer the phone. We've really got to talk, Maurice, and I mean really. I'm not a cheap slut you can just use. This next show is brought to you by Unplanned Parenthood of Starfish Island, Maurice. Don't wait until the last minute to take care of important business. Now it's Bait and Switch with Larry Joe and Bobby Ray. Woo-wee! Hot shit, you got one, Bobby! <laughs> Woo-wee! Yeah, well, fishing for me is more than putting food on the table. It's about mud diving, beer chasing, and gator wrestling. Yeah, domestic violence and a deep-seated hatred of foreigners. Hell yes, that too. <laughs> it's time for bait and switch! Woo! Guns! Glory! Guns! Fish! Boats! Death! 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 God damn, that feels good. Bait and Switch, Vice City's only radio show devoted to water sports. Power boats, water skiing, furry flounder fishing, and dialectical materialism. Oh, wrong script. Who wrote this shit? Tits. Yeah, that's more like it. And tits. It's Bait and Switch with Larry Joe and Bobby Ray, only on VCPR. Well, welcome to the show. And we're going to start the show the way we always do, with a prayer. All right, let's fuck up some wildlife. Amen to that. All right, now today's a special episode of Bait and Switch, coming at you pre-recorded from the Vice City Boat and Sports Show. Man, oh man, this place is incredible. Now, there's so many boats and guns, you put them together and I'm in gunboat heaven, I tell you what. And later on, we're going to be talking to some folks who know a lot about guns and boats, including one lucky guy who's turned his passion into a job. State executioner, Jason McKay. I love that guy's work. Hell yes, it's a deterrent, you know. Now, we'll also talk to a couple of boys from the Panhandle who've invented a new kind of dynamite fish. But first, our regular feature, you and your boat. Now, let's talk about the fundamentals of what to have on your boat. This is a bit akin to last week, but then it was about the basics, and this is about the fundamentals. You know, I mean, it's a big difference, but not one I care to explain right now. That's right, that's one of them things. Either you get it or you don't. It's like herpes. Really. Absolutely. The most important thing is not to bring the old lady. Leave the women folk at home. Amen. 
They get bored and they ruin everything. Testify. Fishing with your best friend is a lot of fun, man. Couple of men on a boat, we're out in nature, we're all alone, we're hungry, we're happy, just like in caveman times. These are the simple pleasures no one understands no more. Uh, that's... That's right. Uh, now, it's important that you choose a body of water not too far from your house. Uh, you don't have to drive very far or at all to get home. Now, after a day of fishing, you're gonna be drunk if you've done it right. But since we're volunteer policemen, we don't get in no kind of trouble. <laughs> yeah, Larry. <laughs> but folks should also make sure it's a real body of water. I once drank a case of lager. I got real morose and down and shit. Got some dynamite. Went manatee hunting like you do. Uh, I mean, blew the shit out of them bastards. Only when I sobered up, I saw the police and the ambulance and stuff that I realized it wasn't a proper waterway, but the local ma fucking water park. That's what it was. It was the local water park. Wait, wait, what the? I was fucked <laughs> up, man. But those bitches was fat. They looked like goddamn manatees. Yeah. Not a good day's fishing. I killed 19 people. 19? And if you screw with me, I'll do the same to you. Jesus, Bobby. You back in Nam? Fuck no! We we came out of that together, remember, Bobby? I mean, I, you saved my leg. Not a good day's fishing. Uh, th thanks, thanks a lot for that, Bob. Thank you. Uh, moving on with the show. Yeah! You got a beer, LJ? Hell no. No? Hell no, not a beer. I got a fucking case of beer. Drink up, boy! Man up! Nice! <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be some good fucking show, I'll tell you yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, god damn, Bobby, you're a regular wind tunnel in there. <laughs> Holy Burping, shit, fishing, smells fucking... like a fucking camel. Man, you crack me up, man. Thanks. Drinks! Yeah. That's the good stuff. You know, LJ, I just want you to know. I mean, man, you mean a lot to me. A real lot, man. Uh, fishing in these parts, see, it's it's all about selecting the right way to go after your prey. Uh, you really gotta think about how to approach the fish, you know? What kinds of pole you're gonna use. And make sure you use the right bait. I mean, I use a stink bait by rubbing night crawlers or grubs on my junk. Real nice. It's unresistible, my junk. Legendary. That's true. They still talking about it in the platoon. Every time we get back together, every single Memorial Day, we always hear about the smell of his junk. Yeah. I hey, mean, when you're in a foxhole, you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, I've seen fish just jump straight out the water and bite his nuts. Remember that time in a foxhole? Me, you. Now, I, be I believe I blacked out that time, and I, I never did find out why. You said your shirt was a Viet Cong did that to me. Uh. You're a host. Talk. I'm sorry. Uh. Tell you, fish can't resist a good stink bait. Or a jerk bait. I do that a lot, too. It's really primal, you know? I mean, what am I gonna do? Fishing makes me horny sometimes. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about, Larry. No, you know, it's like football, you know, in the changing rooms after a big win. Whoa, hey, watch out, Bob! <laughs> there, it got the fucker. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, fishing and hunting at the same time is good, too. Oh, yeah. You know, because you don't have to pick between the two things you like equally, you know? And people don't judge you unfair for it. You know, like some folks who get all judgmental and shit and start calling it a sin. Hey, listen, if you're fishing inland from Vice City, wading for bass and lily pads filled with gators and snakes and copperheads, uh, that's a snake. All right, well, anyway, it's always a hoot. Now, the way I see it, something's gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? Man's gotta eat. That's right, man. You know what I do? I lure him in with my big shiner, my rod tip, dancing on the edge of the water, just waiting for a big, wet bite. You wanna see? Uh, no. No, I do not, Bobby. Look, when you catch that big one, that's what I'm trying to say, you gotta wrestle him in a boat. It feels so good to pin something to the ground, you know? They're wiggling around, they're trying to resist. You know, when you're out there, it's easy to conceive of men without women, you know? And, like, women without men. You know, about, about three of them, you know? Like, I don't know, Swedish or some shit. You are out of your fucking mind, you know that? Hey, listen, most important of all, make sure you sink every penny you own into a good boat. Yeah, because then they can't get any of that alimony, you know what I mean? No alimony for yeah. the bitches. Yeah, Because women are trouble. Amen. Let me tell you something. That's why I go, I go to a strip club, I tear the bills in half, and I get two stuffs for a buck. Women are teases, and they only care about money. Sick of it. <laughs> Kids, you listening up? Hey, and you know fishing's competitive, too. I mean, trying to break the sound barrier to get to a fishing hole early in the morning is a great way to spill the cooler full of beer and knock the transom and bottom half of your motor off your boat, you know? I mean, 50 boats going 0 to 70 in 15 seconds all in the same body of water in the dark at 6 a.m. while drinking? Woo! Now that's having fun out in nature. That is fucking conservation. And if turtles or liberals or anybody else gets in your way of your good time, just yeah. shoot them. Survival of the fittest, man. That's how I got here. Huh. 
I mean, to think there were a million other sperm I had to compete against swimming around in my mom's love tunnel. Um, what the hell are you talking about? Thank the good Lord is what I'm trying to say. Because I am the highest form of life on the earth all from that one day. That, and because I got these thumbs. I call them trigger bitches. That's what I call them. You know what? Whatever. Let's take a quick break. You're listening to Bait and Switch. And even though the environmentalists cry every time we say it, this is VCPR, Vice City Public Radio. And this is Jonathan Freeloader, formerly of Channel 4 News, now here at half the pay because that's what public radio is all about. Doing good. Feeling very good about yourself. But like I told my divorce attorney, I'm going to starve that bitch. Bait and Switch is brought to you by Double Ot Lager Beer. When you're trying to ease the pain of life with a TV cowboy for a president, do it fast with Double Ot Lager. Now back to Bait and Switch. Okay, you're back on Bait and Switch. Now, me and Bobby here was just talking about these do-gooders trying to save the whale or the giraffe or the manatee or the platypus or the echidna, whatever. Now, when I'm fishing a good spot in the cove or open ocean, that big dumb sea cow just gets in my way. I saw a manatee at the Vice City Aquarium last week. It let out a feces the size of your head. Yeah, uh, and I tell you what. I don't want anyone coming in my bathroom and watching me do a number two. Oh. Okay. So, uh, remember, survival is important. We hunt to kill, but nature hunts us to kill, too. I, I was, what? Uh, no, I meant that. I meant I that. Know, I know. I'm just... If you I, get stuck out in the bush and you had to stay warm, say, what would you do? I, you know, look, hey, man, a, man, a man's got to live off the land, you That's know? That's right. You got to be prepared to wrap yourselves in plastic wrap together and share the warmth, man. You know, hey, uh, you know, two bodies pressed together and, you know, it's cold, you, you know. Uh, yeah. You spoon, or, you do or, what you got to do, or, man. Or, or, uh, or as an alternative to that, you know, you could always, yeah. could just bring some gasoline, set some on fire. Yeah, 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 you know what, that's it, that's it, burning shit is great. Hell yeah. Fuck, burn people too, I don't care, that's how we want Nam. Any scrubber far should do it, really. <clears throat> so that's, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Everything you need for yeah. a successful trip into the wilderness. Yep. Now we got boats, yep. fishing poles, uh, high quality ordnance, beer. Yeah, beer. We got more beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a buddy. Don't forget a buddy out there. Yeah, and you'll have yourself a good old time. You know, some Indian tribes have beauty contests where the female contestants have to kill and slaughter a sheep. I mean, to see a woman all covered in blood and sinew, I, what I'm saying is, they're all rabbit bitches anyway. Yeah, amen to that. Amen to that. Now, that was this week's You and Your Boat. You're listening to Bait and Switch with me, Larry Joe, and my co-host, Bobby Ray. No, no, no. Wait, wait. We're more than co-hosts, all right? We're buddies. Uh, I mean, i take a bullet for you. Well. A big load in the face, bro. Yeah. What? Uh, we're best buddies, is uh, what I'm saying. Sure. I mean, we did that thing together, but no, we're best no, buddies. No, no, we did not no, do that thing. No, now, you we asked did and I so. said, no, we could we not did do so. that. We did we became, not do that. We became blood brothers, okay? Oh. Yeah, after you cut your hand, taking that treble hook oh, right. out of that C&I dog, <laughs> yeah, you, right. you, you accidentally snagged. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. That's what you're uh, yeah. talking about. Of course. I mean, we have the best times, you know? You, me, the guys, men. Having fun together, we're laughing, crying, hugging. Shut I'm just up saying. with that funny shit. Just can it right there, no, Bobby you, Ray. Give me you hear a goddamn me? break, man. This stuff's important to me. Listen, I have All a right? wife listening yeah, right she's now. She's a to goddamn this show. whore. What? Oh man. Oh, oh man. what? Well, no, no, man. not this again. Ugh. Again. All right. Now we're on the air. Damn. We're at the boat I'm show, sorry, okay? Man. Good times, man. Think happy thoughts. Outboard know. motors, dead fish, bullets <sighs> ripping through flesh. I'm thinking about death right now, oh, man. Oh, great, great. Uh. That's happy. So anyhow, listen, Bait and Switch is coming at you today from the boat show here in Vice City. I hate myself. I, I, fuck, I just hate myself, Look, man. don't lose any sleep over it, all right? Just don't worry about it. Forget it. We met some great folk here at the boat show. Real people, not office folk. I mean, people with necks. A couple of girls with big tits advertising the ammunition bazooka sale. I said to her, hey, you got a license to carry them 44s? <laughs> oh, she didn't get it. The sluts, man. You know what I mean? They're just, they're, just, they're just sluts. All right, shut up. Okay, you hear me? Just shut up, all right? I ain't doing this no more. And I mean no more like never. You hear me, Bobby Ray? You hear me? You are acting hysterical, acting funny, and I don't mean ha-ha funny. I mean funny like... Yeah, yeah, man. All right, all right. Uh, you know, I, I hear you, Larry Joe. It's just, all right, so so say oh, it. Look, man, all right? I'm sorry I called your wife Mary Sue a whore, okay? And those two hooker sluts. I'm sorry. All right, look, at Bobby's just upset at this big old striper that he had, and the line broke right as he's about to pull into the boat. I mean, I understand. I understand that. Now, he's just letting off some steam, trying to relax. 
Sometimes, relaxing can be stressful. It's like when you accidentally hit a bitch in the face for mouthing the fuck off to you, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, you, yeah. be quiet, or I'll walk, and you'll be back at the truck stops and off the goddamn radio. Oh, man, relaxing is great. And uh, here at the boat show, it's all about relaxing. I'll tell you, man, you know what relaxes me? Jerking off. Right now on Bait and Switch, we got a guy I met earlier with something no serious outdoorsman should be without. Welcome to Bait and Switch, Kenny Crane. <laughs> Hi guys, how y'all doing? Hey, have a lager beer. You bet your ass. So, Kenny, how you enjoying the boat show? Man, it just gets better every year. I mean, this year is just amazing. I mean, it's just full of boats upon blocks. Yeah, it's incredible, you know what I mean? These boats, I mean, you know, you see guys standing around thinking about what comes natural and primal. You know, like in a circle. Yeah, you bet your sweet ass, but I'm here representing my product. Something I invented, you know. That no serious owner should ever consider going into the wilderness without her. It's deer urine. Uh... Hey, now what in the high holy hell are you talking about, son? Have you ever covered yourself in deer urine? The bucks can't resist it, boy. They'll roll up on you. Look at old wide-eyed, scratching their antlers on trees. It'll give you a big throbber, I'm telling you. Look, I, I don't care. I ain't putting no animal urine on me. I will. I mean, for the show. That just about wraps up our program, broadcasting from the Vice City Boat and Sports Show. Stop down here if you can. You'll see a lot of things make you proud to be a man. Like other men. Like, uh, like, like guns and... and yeah, 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 and yeah. flags for yeah. your trucks and, and, and beating up on little girls and stuff like that. You know, yeah. new ways through technology of yeah. showing who is the dominant species. Until next time, stick in your rod and screw the limit. And if it moves, fill it full of holes. Amen to that. <laughs> oh, shit. That was bait and switch. Wow, Florida has a lot of heritage, doesn't it? They say the South will rise again. And look, they've infiltrated this station. But that's what public radio is. It represents the public, 25% of which is at least that dim-witted and lazy. I'm Michelle Montanius, now one from the archives of old-time radio from before this was a public station, a show that first aired 40 years ago, The Time Ranger. The Vice City Broadcasting System and American Oil and Motors presents The Time Ranger. He travels through time, hunting the biggest game of all, public enemies that try to destroy our America. He's Ernest Kegel, a man of mystery, well, a student of science and polygamy, a man who has a time machine in his pants that, when he masters, he travels back in time to right wrongs, save women, and pleasure himself. With his sometimes lover, when he's intoxicated, the lovely Trixie Lane, the Time Ranger meets up with danger tonight in... Boxing the One-Eyed Clown! Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. do you have to carry on like this every night? Quiet, dame, quiet, will you? Why are you always emotional at the wrong time? Oh, Ernie. Don't I... Ernie me. Go sit in the corner, you dumb cluck. This is something I gotta do. Not just for me, not just for you, but for everyone. Why, when I take out my time machine, I can go just about anywhere. My mind wanders, see? And I'm a Union soldier storming into the home of a defenseless southern slave owner. Or at a Roman orgy somewhere with a centurion's helmet on. Or the girls' locker room at a high school at some uh, godforsaken town. Now, if you're Pardon me, toots, I shall go into the commode there and travel back in time. Be back in about five. And so our hero travels back in time. Where to? He never knows. Wherever he is needed most. Sire, why art thou getting intimate with thine self in yonder corner? Ah, say what? You can't see me. I'm uh, completely invisible. Now, don't break my concentration, kid. I must have traveled to the wrong place. I wanted to be at a Viking solstice feast with a couple of milkmaidens sampling the dairy products. You get the idea. But I, too, can see thee. You better put that thing away. Mother caught me doing that and made me... All right, stow it. I don't need to hear your personal history stories, son. This is my time machine, see? And by the way, it's not an ordinary... Gee, will it, because it sure is small. Knock it off. I don't need to know what I already know, all right? Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll travel back to high school and save Mary one more time from marrying that awful bounder who became a disreputable senator. Oh, Mary, you're some cheerleader. Let me have that. Those pom-poms. What's that, doll? Under the bleachers? You got it. Yes. Hey. 
don't give me the cold hard stare, kid. When you get middle age and spend each day in self-loathing, you'll understand. Believe me, you, you will. Hey, by the way, tell me, what year is this anyhow? The sundial says it's 1175. This is England. Dragons roam the land, and we are also infested with cliches. Tell me about it. Well, you can travel the future. Ah, uh, yes, of course I can. Don't you listen? I told you, that's where I'm from. I'm the Time Ranger. I like to travel through time and fight injustice. So tell me, boy, what do you do for fun? I like to torture animals and slow kids. Good for you. Tell me more about the future. Well, kid, let me tell you, things are a little different there. Why don't we get a quill and write this down? You could learn something. Let me tell you a few things about life, oh, 800 years from now. First off, there's a big difference between excitement and what you call a arousal. But these newfangled penny arcades will give you either at any time. Next off... Sometimes use special potions and emollients and rubs and ointments to make their, what do you call them, a... Uh, testes reach the floor. You know what I'm talking about. Testicles, family jewels. And women, they paint their faces yellow and are sometimes called Brian walking the streets of the village. Uh, and that, my boy, is the future, like it or not. Hello, Richard. Have you burnt those plague victims yet? Who are you talking to? Mother, mother, this is my new friend. Why, I don't see anybody. I need you to get on with killing those lepers. But first, empty the chamber pots on their heads. No, really. It's the Time Ranger. He's from the future. He says in the future, unicorns go around pleasing women. Well, they try anyway. Well, that sounds interesting. I'll say, the future sounds saucy. Now, don't you and your visible friend get hot under the collar. I don't want any more of your silly ideas. Autoerotic asphyxiation, indeed. Tell me, does my pox look okay? Okay, in this top, the king is coming by to take me illicitly. Uh, how you doing, doll? Forgive me. Nice to meet you. I'm the, uh, Time Ranger. Good heavens, the ghost. No, it's the Time Ranger. That's what I just said. He's got a special mini thingy that when he rubs, helps him right the world's wrongs, he showed me. You did what with my son? Don't get oh. your knickers in a twist, sweetheart. What? I kept yes. it on the up and up with the boy. Now, while it sounds confusing, it is in fact completely natural. And my own empirical research has definitely proved you don't go blind, which is lucky for me. Besides which, I am from the future. And now, I know my mission. I must save you from this awful king who's coming to have his vicious way with you. I must overthrow this maniacal monarch and establish a, a democracy. Yeah, where people are free and everyone has cars and uh, double-enders. Well, yeah, that sounds about right. Well, 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 I appreciate your kind offer. But to be honest, since my husband got slaughtered by the Gothic hordes, I rather enjoy the king's visitations. It's the only action I get. Besides which, his waters have turned black and he'll be dead soon. I got no clue what that means, sweetheart, but it does sound pretty awful. Well, times are tough since the Black Death took one and three. The king ensures we have enough grain, he drowns the witches and protects us from the dragons. All and right, all right, see. I get it. This king must die. You don't got to spell it out for well, me. Well, we all must die. We all must die. But the real question is, will we go to the fiery pits to burn in eternal torment, or will we really suffer? Now, that's <laughs> where you're incorrect, doll face. You see, I'm from the future, like I told you, from 1938. Where I live is just like heaven. Why, we even had a brief period recently where cocaine could be purchased from a pharmacist and the cheerleaders never grow old. Oh, that future sounds awful. Time Ranger, leave us to burn the lepers in peace. Your time here is done. Then, madame, Ma'am, if you'll excuse me, I must enter the dark recesses of time through this special portal I carry about my person. Oh, fiery heavens! Richard, about your eyes! Ah, uh, so small! The Time Ranger is a eunuch! Woo I heard that, Toots. And so our hero travels in time once more. Where to? He never knows. Wherever he is needed most, and whichever way his time machine points him. Sometimes forwards, sometimes backwards. Always fun if you're open-minded. What are you doing with that little gherkin? Ah, stow it, mademoiselle. Nothing. You see, you can't see me. Oh, boy. That's better. <clears throat> anyway, I'm uh, from the future. Oh, zut, alors, monsieur, this I know nothing about, but these are terrible times. People are being slaughtered. What? What? We can't have that. Well, fear not, young lady. The Time Ranger is here. My time machine must sense a disturbance. Yes. Off with your head. Off with your head. Either off with your head or off with your freely skirt. The abominable. Whatever that means. But tell me. Abominable. Who's, yes, yes, yes. Who's committing this atrocity, anywho? Uh, the revolting little peasants. The scum they want food and not to be whipped. I mean, who ever heard of such a thing? They are peasants, monsieur. And as such, we must piss on them. And now they have got off the heads of two men. It is a tragedy. All right, all right, all right. Turn off the waterworks already. You're soaking my loafers. Oh, now, you just bring that heaving bosom right over here. Yeah, okay. a little closer. That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to rest my uh, time machine right between them. Hey. <laughs> Likes a little change of pace once in a while. Keeps things spicy. <laughs> now, with my magical powers, I will bring down the revolt and restore order to the world, and eventually, well, peace shall reign. Oh, monsieur, you are my only hope. All right, yeah, yeah. Now, don't be alarmed, sweetheart. You will feel a gentle rocking. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. But I assure you, it is quite safe. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, quite no. safe. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Lucky them. I, I have already had one slow child. Well, then it'll be on your head, you foxy French harlot. Come on, let me have at you. Oh, oh no, Monsieur Time Traveler. The, the peasants are rising up to take off our heads. Ah, uh, the peasants aren't the only thing that's rising. Will our traveler be safe? Will he survive the angry French mob? Will his travel machine return to full working order in that perky French bosom? Who knows? Find out next time on The Time Ranger! Wow, it's a shock that show was taken off the air so fast 40 years ago. But anyone with talent was storming Normandy. We'll have more from the archives of the Vice City Broadcasting System again soon. Next is New World Order, international news that takes you around the world and reaffirms you should stick to the safety of your planned subdivision. I love Florida. It's a gift to America. This is VCPR. This is New World Order. I'm your host, Dwayne Thorne. I'm an American. Are you? If not, you don't deserve to own a radio. If, like me, you don't want a passport and consider Los Santos far too full of hmm, exotic people, this is the show for you. Too many shows have started up with no respect for politic persuasion, no understanding that a real man doesn't need to see the world to have an opinion on it, and certainly doesn't need to meet foreigners to know they are up to no good. The world is a beautiful place. Let's make sure it stays that way. By controlling it properly. But how do we do that? Well, first, by one-sided diatribes on the airwaves. But also by remembering a lot of things aren't American. And that's sad. Here, children grow up happy. Go to overfunded public schools where they can't pray. Play ball in the street, then have a lemonade and some heavy petting. But the storybook childhood isn't so for millions of people in third world countries. Like Europe. Bryce Parker, our special correspondent, has this special report on child prostitution in the Far East. Hello, Bryce. Hello, Dwayne. Thailand. From Temple to TNA, many come to Bangkok to do just that. But in a crisis that is growing, according to experts on the subject, like me, more than one million young boys and girls are engaged in commercial sexual activity. How much? For as little as a dollar, anyone traveling here can have teen girls. Wow, that's terrible. Yes, inflation. Brain, I traded a $20 radio with a village man for his two daughters. And what lovely daughters they were. Pouty lips, bronze skin, tight bodies. Just beginning to develop breasts. They clearly had a hunger for love. There's a saying in Thailand, eat the fruit as it ripens. It tastes better. This, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, this is a special New World Order investigation into the terrors of the Far East. Bryce, would it be possible to have two virgins pull me around in a rickshaw naked while I taught them about what democracy could do for them? Yes, I could sort that out. Excellent. Bryce Parker reporting from Thailand. Coming up, do cigarettes make you a cowboy? Millions of Chinese think so. We'll talk to Redwood Tobacco CEO Ken Silverman, but first, let's take some calls. Hello. Yeah, Dwayne, man, hell, you got a great show. Uh, I wanted to ask, what's the deal with the one dollar bill? What do you mean? Well, there's an eyeball on top of a pyramid, and it says, Anuit Coptis. <laughs> hell, if that eyeball don't creep me out enough. It's Latin, I think. Well, they should keep foreign languages off of our money. I mean, pretty soon we'll all speak Latin, and what are you going to do then? I'm tired of seeing languages I don't understand on signs or people speaking funny. It's un-American. What do you do? I'm a customs and immigration official, but what are you going to do about the Latin menace? Probably go to commercial messages. Oh, I can't. This is public radio. Well, let's have a pledge drive or something. <laughs> you cheap asshole. You don't care about me. You turn me on when you like, and then you don't take care of me when it matters. It's only 125 bucks. Come on. You don't even have to come with me. Shh, Michelle, <laughs> I'll make that slick little failed circus clown pay. That's Michelle Montanius on her own personal pledge drive. And I'm doing the same for free radio in your area. This radio is free. 
And unless you pay for it, right now, it won't be much longer. Explain that if you can. Thanks! It's a disgrace having to beg for money. It's the 80s! And your only moral purpose is your own happiness, no matter what the cost to others. I've been abroad and I know what it's like. And let me tell you, the food's no good, the bathrooms stink, and the money don't work. India is in the news again. Streets riddled with elephant dung and snake charmers. Food that gives you gas. An unhealthy respect for the cow. And a caste system that nobody understands. Chuck Summers is in New Delhi. Thanks, Dwayne. Despite its name, the city is nothing like a deli, except the food is old and the coffee tastes like armpit. India is an ancient culture, and it shows. Sweaty hordes of yogi folk waft about chanting Om and giving that smug look that comes with inappropriate stretching in public. I learned quickly not to show your teeth when at the monkey temples. It makes the monkeys angry. But I didn't come here to get in feces fights. I've got a little Brazilian waiter I do that with on Friday nights back at home, and my wife is out playing bridge. These cocky contortionists aren't just a threat to our convenience stores back in America. There's a bigger threat looming on the horizon. The food. Dwayne, I've been here for 24 hours and I can tell you, Indian food is pureed terrorism, resulting in gut-wrenching ass explosions that make you feel like you're shitting fire. My trip began in Calcutta, where a... Oh, oh no. Not again. Ah! There you have it. News from the front line. No matter how painful, that's what you get from New World Order. Abroad as it really is. Dirty, smelly, and desperate for handouts from the greatest nation on earth. That's the truth. Now, if you're scared of people with different colored skin, or a different belief system than you, it doesn't mean you're small-minded. It means you've understood that there is right and there is wrong, whatever the liberals in the government try to tell you. When you're facing the final judgment, try telling the real Supreme Court that you thought everyone was made equal. You'll get laughed out of court. It's a club, listeners. Anyone can join as long as they pay. But if they choose not to, they better live with the consequences. Let's take a caller. You're on New World Order. What's your problem with abroad? Hey. Yes. Uh, Dwayne? Yes. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that Buddha guy. Okay. Man, I love that Buddha guy. I'm all about the little fat bastard. I can tell you what, that's some fucking hot shit enlightenment. I tell you what, boy, you sit under a tree, you're getting all the way to Nirvana hot shit. Okay, what's your point? My wife, she says, Thornton, what you doing under that tree? And you know what I say? I'm minding my own fucking business, you damn bitch. You should get some fucking enlightenment. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to eat. I like to eat. Set perfectly and digest. I got that book, From Enlightenment to the Outhouse, in ten easy meals. It's good chicken fried steak, a bit of hog, Biscuits and gravy, some greens, grits, gator, immigrants, cheese. This isn't a cooking show. I know that, bud. Give me a fucking break. How are you, Mr. Hind fucking mighty with your big city ideas? Man, you come down my way and I will fuck you up, boy. Fuck you up proper. That's what fancy foreign religions will do to you listeners. Thanks to my religion, I am a peace-loving, God-fearing American, and I'll kill or maim anyone who says otherwise, or has an alternate view of the afterlife. Once you have figured out the meaning of the universe, you can do whatever you want. Kiflam. Talking of consequences, let's find out how American investment has saved this rainforest community in Ecuador. John Sickerman has this report. John. Ecuador. I don't know where I am on the map, but wherever it is, it's high up and I feel sick. This place is driving me mad. But inside this crazy country burns the heart of a capitalist nation, as I learned recently when I met Pedro Anuncion, who is with us now. Pedro. Hello, John, and thank you. From the bottom of my heart, you have helped many people with your investments. This awful virgin rainforest was holding my people back. They had no way to develop. Now, thanks to your country's brave invest... 
investment, we have stripped back the forest and built a factory that enriches uranium and lead, mercury, coca. That's beautiful. Is the factory beautiful? I lose my place in the script. Um, America is number one. You have brought so many jobs and helped make a proud people self-sufficient. I hope one day to meet this woman, Bonnie Knight. I love your American TV and your zebra candy bars and a sugar cereal with marshmallows in the shape of Ax and Kama Sutra positions. So the people own the factory? Uh, one of them does, yes. Who? Uh, me. Like I said, John, thank you. If you ever need something, you let me know. I got some rebel fighters who fuck people up for you. I got women who can suck the silver off the trade tables on my private jet. I got great flow, man. Listen, baby, you need someone kill? You come to Tio Pedro. You and me, we like hermanos now. Well, as you can see, the people are very excited here in Ecuador with the changes we have brought about to this community. Fan. Fantastic! Even a racist like me can be made to feel good by a story as heartwarming as that. See, foreigners, you see, our way works. Let's head to the phones. Hello, you're on New World Order. What's your point? Oh, yeah, this is Michelle calling from the Midwest. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Dwayne. I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, listen, I've been listening to it for years and never gone abroad. Oh, no, I, I just want to thank you. You saved my life and my virginity. Thanks, Michelle. Because if I'd gone abroad, I probably would have been murdered or raped or worse. I, I just get scared just thinking about it. You saved my life, and I've been saving myself for you, Dwayne. I love you. I'm ready for you. I'm a woman. Oh, take me. Oh, jeez. How old are you, Michelle? I'm 47, but I'm clean, and I'm ready, and I make such a great potato casserole. We could just lie in it on the bed. Okay, next caller. Who's on the phones? No, no one. Let's go to another news segment. Heinrich Havelock is on the ground in Quidibam and Quidibim in Buttfuck Nowhere in Venezuela. Heinrich, uh, Heinrich. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. Uh, Heinrich Havelock here with Chief Brown. Tell me how the free market has helped you, Chief. Call me Phil. Okay, so, Phil. Uh, how, how is life as an indigenous chief? Well, as you can see, there's not much forest left here, thanks to the great chainsaws the Americans left us. Whereas before my people lived in equality and harmony with nature, now I am the boss man. I get to sleep with all the women of my tribe, while husbands must pretend to like me and let me win at golf. Uh, oh, that, that's great. Now we build condos, chain stores, mega churches. Soon, todas las turistas come and see me sleep with all the women from around the world. Me have grande carro. Me have thunder. I am knight of road. I have big schlong. Uh, Heinrich, can I interrupt for a second? Shut up with you, you grass skirt wearing throwback. So, let me get this straight. You mean this guy was a savage and now has got a real sense of morality? Yeah, he's gone from a system of stagnating equality to one of progress through ruthless competition. That is magnificent! And you'll have more time down there if this pledge drive doesn't get cooking. It may be a while before we wire you some more money. Uh, Thank you, Heinlich. That's all we have time for. Catch us next time on New World Order. Remember, love your country. Don't question politicians, especially when they have a winning smile and great hair. And you'll be part of the New World Order. This is VCPR. I'm Jonathan Freeloader. Next up is a show that aired in Vice City back in the 40s and shows what happens when companies underwrite radio. It's a rebroadcast of More Head Rides Again, a show that was a favorite of arsonists and conservationists alike. It's something we dug up from the archives and thought you might enjoy. But honestly, we're just trying to fill time, and we've run out of money. This is VCPR, offering top-quality entertainment for all ages and literacy rates. More Head Rides Again! Gordon Moorhead and the Exploding Breasts. This episode of Moorhead Rides Again is brought to you by the Vice City Broadcasting System in association with the friendly Napalm Company of Florida. Because when you need to clear the bush, our Napalm is your best friend. First, let me ask you something. How would you like to have a beautiful bronze medal of membership to show you're a special friend of Gordon Moorhead and a bona fide member of his new 1946 Public Protection Team? 
a medal you'll be so proud of to show your friends you'll want to carry it with you wherever you go, just like a real Medal of Honor. It has a swell picture of Gordon Moreland on it, catching a crook. It also pictures of his buddies, Molly Malmsteen and the Chief. It contains special symbols, including letters and numbers that tell you important things, which is true of many other things, including books and dogs. But wait, it has an even more special feature on the back. The most exciting thing of all about your bronze medal of membership to the public protection team is a real lead bullet. Don't believe us. Suck it and see. That distinctive lead taste proves it's real. Lead is full of nutrients. Just ask any bad guy filled full of the stuff by Gerald Moorhead. They soon stop acting bad after they've been dosed up with lead, and you will too. Here's how you can get one absolutely free. Just go to your nearest friendly napalm company of Florida dealer and get your dad to buy 300 gallons of the good stuff. And you'll get an application to join the public protection team right away. All you need to do is fill it in and get your dad to send a check for $10 payable to Napalm Promotions Incorporated. And before you know it, you'll be fighting crime in the burgeoning metropolis of Vice Beach or down in the islands with George Moorcock and the gang. That's right. It won't cost you a penny. So what are you waiting for? As Jeremy Moorhead himself would say, you know who I am. I'm your chance to repent of the way downstairs. Bang, bang, bang. And now to Gordon Moorhead in Moorhead Rides Again. Gordon Moorhead and the Exploding Breasts. Last time, Moorhead was in Vice Beach, looking for a fisherman who had gone missing. The fisherman's daughter was explaining the circumstances of his disappearance. Then suddenly a shot rang out. The daughter was dead. Moorhead and Molly Malmsteen were immediately on the case. Moorhead was confident he knew who had just committed this dastardly act. Gordon! No! She's dead. Are you okay, Gordon? How are you bearing up? I mean, that woman was just killed while you were speaking to her. I feel faint and a little scared. That's because you're a woman. Calm down. Oh, you don't have to go and get cross, but I guess I deserved it. Gordon, you're incredible. I feel much better knowing you're here. Who shot her? Oh! There. Now I'm better. Helps a man think. Molly, I understand that being a woman, your interests are more in cookery than murder. So I'll make it simple. I bet you're thinking it was the same criminal gang who was holding the old fisherman. Why, yes. Yeah, that's why you'll never be a man. It wasn't. It wasn't? No. So who shot this fisherman's daughter? I did. You? But, oh, why? The fact is, Molly, there are a lot of things you don't understand with that darn poisonous estrogen coursing willy-nilly through your veins. Mm. With her father missing, that girl was now an orphan. And a girl without parents is five times more likely to end up a prostitute, a fallen woman who ruins American marriages, or worse. Oh, that's terrible. I know. So I shot her and threw the heater in the river. I saved her from herself and the rest of society from the kind of filth that preys on the loins of American men. Gordon, you're so brave. Only a man would know such things. What about the fisherman? I'll tell you what. With his only daughter dead, those kidnappers who have taken the fisherman have no one to blackmail. They'll soon have to release him. When they do, we'll be ready. Gordon, you're amazing. Ow! Don't get cocky. I was just doing my job. Look, there's something else you've missed, Molly. What? Before she was tragically killed, the daughter said her father was unarmed and never wore a gun. You know what that means? Yes. That's right, Molly. It means he's a sissy. I imagine when he hears his daughter is dead, he'll cry. What kind of a man cries, Gordon. I don't know. One that loses wars, I think. Mm. Probably the kind of man who raises a two-dollar tramp for a daughter, Molly. A very sick individual. And probably a communist. I don't like to express strong emotions, but I think I hate this fisherman, Gordon. Don't hate him, Molly. Pity him. And help me kill him. Oh, I shall. Looks like the chief has shown up. What a surprise. The cops get here after the real crime fighting's done. Go ahead, Miss Malmstein. I thought I told you two clowns to stop meddling in police business. Listen to me, chief. I respect you, but the fact is, without me, this town would be over before it's even begun. Vice Beach should be a peaceful place, full of genuine people and Americans. But while searching for this fisherman, we've uncovered a ring of illegal communists and almost worse, a man who was leading girls into a life of hideous and unmentionable vice. Good on you, Moorhead. You're the best man in this place. You've got my backing, whatever you do. Kill whoever you think necessary. Thanks, Chief. You're a good cop in a difficult situation. But, Moorhead, tell me, what men are doing these terrible things in our lovely new town? Not men, Chief. Man. One man. Who? A missing fisherman. He's faked his death to put us off the scent. A fisherman, of course. Killing his own daughter. Moorhead, I know we've had our differences in the past, but the city needs you. Our burgeoning beach sign community could be ruined by this sort of scandal. You have to bring this man to justice, whatever it takes. I shall, Chief. You know you can count on me. He's probably hiding in a swamp somewhere. Yeah, Moorhead. Firstly, we don't say swamp. 
We say attractive wetland countryside right on your doorstep should you decide to move to our beautiful part of the world. Sorry. Secondly, if you're heading into the swamp, you'll probably need some help. Me? Help? I'm Gordon Moorhead, not some rusky chief. I mean this kind of help. Friendly napalm. It's great for all your tree and flesh-burning needs. Ooh, you mean friendly napalm is great at fighting crime as well as all the other handy uses it can be put to? That's right, I do. As a policeman and a father and a proud American who served in two wars. Amen. I use friendly napalm for all my napalm needs. There's nothing like a substance that sticks to your skin and roasts you alive to make you rethink your current political or economic system. Cheers, Chief. See you later. But Gordon, wait. I'm coming, too. No, Molly. It's too dangerous for girls, even game little terriers like you. I insist. I may be weak and irrational and moody at times, and for 25% of the month, I'm completely unbearable to be around. But I'll do anything for justice. Anything at all. Besides, who else are you going to talk to? Ah, uh, you're right, Molly. You're a good kid for a dame. Oh, that's smart. Let's go, Gordon. Do you think we'll ever make it out of this crazy hellhole? I don't know, but I know I'm a man, and I know you're a woman, and I know there are things I'd like to say to you. Swell things, Ooh. real things, Ooh. but now ain't the time. This is too serious. All of Vice Beach is under threat. This calls for more to ride again. Later that evening, in the murky recesses of a swamp... These wetlands sure are swampy and undeveloped. Sure. Now, will you be quiet? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I wish Pablo were here to help us. His Mexican cunning would really be useful in a situation like this. Yes, he's foreign, but occasionally quite useful. Exactly. Hey, what's that noise? What noise? There, that whistling. It's Pablo! Pablo, you old dog. Ah, buenos noches, amigo. Buenos noches, senorita Malmsteen. Pablo, what are you doing here? Oh, Pablo no can say, senorita. But since you ask, I was searching for the souls of my ancestors. But I thought you were Mexican. Why would they be buried in Florida? Yeah, that's true. They're not here. Hey, would you like a tortilla chip? Pablo, this is no time for eating. Vice Beach is under threat. A vicious murderer, pimp, and communist is on the loose in these beautiful wetlands right on our doorstep. And we've got to find him and bring him to justice. But Gordon, what kind of idiot would hide in these awful swamps? I mean, he's full of alligators and snakes and sea cow poo-poo. Who would live anywhere near this dump out of choice? You foreigners don't know much. You're a primitive, Pablo, but you're a good man. This gem of a city is exotic and relaxing once you get over the man-eating reptiles, shark-infested waters, and tropical diseases. But enough of that. How do we catch this guy? We split up and search the swamps. Uh, pristine wetlands. Whatever. And when we find him, amigos, then and only then, we... What? We bring him to justice and drink tequila. It's crazy, but it just might work. See, by the spirits of my ancestors, we find this crazy killer. You Americanos and my people are friends forever. Oh, forever. Ah! Let's split up. Molly, you better cut across that swampy bush and swim the waterways. It's safer. Pablo and I will stick together on the dry path. Come on. This real estate market ruining killer must be here somewhere. I mean, what kind of sick man would try to ruin Vice Beach's reputation? It's awful. Help! Help! Who's that? I'm a humble fisherman. I've broken my leg and I've been stuck here for two days. Oh! Hey, wait! You're the one who's been causing all this trouble! Listen, lady, I'm really in a lot of pain. Can you get me some help? You've been trying to ruin the city, bring down condo prices and infest it with communists! I don't know what you're talking about. My name's Pete Banbury. I've fished these waters for 20 years. All I do is I fish and try to raise my daughter right. Well, Pete, there's some good news. Gordon Moorhead saved your daughter from turning to a life of ruining families and being a prostitute. My lily? But she wants to be a schoolteacher, not a hooker. What are you talking about? A teacher? Not anymore, she doesn't. Why not? She's dead. Oh, no. Please, no. I can't handle it. First my leg, now this. Oh, oh you oh. crying. Of course I'm crying. My only daughter's dead. What kind of a man are you? Oh, I bet you're a communist. Get some help. My leg's going green and I'm going into shock. Help! Gordon! Gordon, he's got me and he's tearing at my clothes! I am not. I prefer thin girls. Oh. Please, I need help. Not so fast, you sick scumbag. First you turn your own daughter into a cheap whore, and then you join the Communist Party, and now you're attacking my assistant, the delectable but slightly portly Molly Moundstein. But... I'm going to kill you if it's the last thing I do. Oh, please, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Gordon! Gordon, he's had a gun! No, I haven't. Bullets don't work on a man this criminally insane. They will just make him stronger. What should we do, Pablo? You're full of cunning. See, si. Mi sombrero. She say, use the friendly name. Bomb. Righto. Incredible. He's ingenious, that foreigner. Stand back. You should have stayed out of Vice Beach, you sicko. I've lived there 55 years. The real estate rush has destroyed our natural resources. Liar. I won't let you stand in the way of progress. Die. <laughs> <laughs>
Who would have thought that something as beautiful as a napalm fire could also be doing something as noble as burning to death a criminal genius like that? Incredible. You Americanos are crazy. Hey, who wants a tequila? Oh, oh no! What? My God, her breasts have exploded. Holy three holes. That's right, Pablo. This town is safe. But the next time we have trouble brewing... Moorhead will ride again. Tonight, the Vice City Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations coast to coast have brought you Moorhead Rides Again. Gordon Moorhead and the Exploding Breasts by D.H. Wolzow. These exciting dramas are sent to you each week at the same time. All characters, names, places, and incidents used in this drama are purely fictitious. Isn't it a shame you can't buy napalm anymore? I sure could use a barrel of the stuff. That or a remote-controlled explosive device. But like draining the wetlands to build golf courses, it's progress. Just like my hair. I love that show. Some of the values are a little old-fashioned, but it's good entertainment that shows the value of patriarchy in our